Ben Whiting with Paddle TV here. And in this video, I'm giving you a sneak peek to a new piece of paddling gear, specifically Aquabound's new Ray series of paddles, which aren't actually really new because they've been around for more than 15 years. But in that time, this is the, the first real update upgrade that they've done to these paddles. And so I'm going to tell you what they've done to these paddles and tell you how they perform after having tested them. Now to let you know from the outset, Aquabound is a sponsor of my Paddle Tales Adventure series. But you also need to know that I've been using Aquabound paddles for over 25 years. In fact, it started when I was competing in whitewater kayaking. And I've been using them for that long because I'm a fan. I'm a fan of Aquabound paddles. But it really doesn't change the fact that whenever I do reviews or videos of this nature, I'm trying to give you as much as I can an unbiased review of the product because my personal mission is to help people get outdoors and have the best experiences possible. And a big part of that is choosing the right gear for the job. And so this isn't a promotional video. It's an information video and it doesn't need to be a promotional video because these paddles have been around for over 15 years and they probably are, I, although I don't know for sure, the best selling paddles in the world already. So they're great paddles. What I'm looking at is what have they done to change these paddles and uh, what are they like? And so I'm gonna give them a test. Okay, so let's get right into it and talk about the Ray series. Now, the Ray series, as I already mentioned, it came out, I think it was actually 17 years ago that the Ray series came out and quickly became one of the best selling paddle series in the world. And the reason it did that is because it combined affordability with durability and performance. Now, when I say affordability, I mean, they're not the cheapest paddles on the market, but they are very affordable paddles. They range from 110, or they ranged from 110 to 250 uh, US dollars. But let's not, you know, we don't really need to talk about what they were. This is really, video is really about what they are now, what the new series is all about. And so let's talk about the changes they've made to the Ray series. Now, as a whole, the Ray series hasn't really changed that much. You have three different models to choose from. The least expensive one is the fiberglass model. The most expensive is the carbon model. And then the middle of the road is the hybrid model. And all of these models come with two blade sizes to choose from. You have the manta ray blade, which is a, a fatter, wider blade that's designed for larger paddlers or to get more for a more aggressive paddling style. And then you've got the stingray, which is a longer, narrower blade, which is designed for smaller paddlers or, or a more relaxed paddling stroke. Now the blade shapes themselves, they're very similar to the original. They have changed them a bit and their idea was to change them to make for a, a smoother stroke. And they changed how they made the blades a bit, uh, a bit as well to offer a stiffer feel, um, less flex to give more power. But all in all, they look very similar to the original blades. The other thing they've done is they got these two schnazzy new colors, the uh, electric green and sunset. But um, in general, the series looks very similar. Now the change that I'm personally most excited about is the, a new ferrule option that they have. And if you don't know what a ferrule is, the ferrule is the connection point at the center of the paddle of a two piece paddle. Now this ferrule system is a simple snap button ferrule system. This is the fiberglass, the cheapest of the models. And this is the most basic ferrule system. The, the drawback of a snap button system is that you have a little bit of play in the paddle. And that can be a little distracting when you're paddling. It's not a lot, but just a little bit there. And that's why Aquabound 10 years ago or so, they came up with this PosiLock ferrule system. And this PosiLock ferrule system is designed to 
be a rock solid connection. There's zero play in the paddle whatsoever. It also lets you choose an infinite number of feathering options or twists to the paddle. So with the, the new Ray series is the VersaLock ferrule system. And the joy of the VersaLock ferrule system is it's a lot like the PosiLock in that it's rock solid and you have an infinite number of feathering options or twist options. But by opening that little trigger, you can now adjust the length of the paddle as well, up to 15 centimeters. And so that's great for people that don't know exactly what length of paddle that they want. Um, they're gonna be using different kayaks that require, or preferably different paddle lengths, or people that are sharing paddles as well. So it really is a nice option to have a telescoping ferrule. So, I mean, really the question is with these changes, what kind of value, what are you paying for them and, and what kind of value are you getting? And that's what we're gonna talk about. So let's start by talking about the new, or not root new, but refined blade shapes that they have. Now, after testing them for a couple of hours, I really didn't notice a big difference. And I don't see that as being a bad thing because I really liked the blade shapes beforehand. Uh, if the blades, if the, the paddles cost more, if this was an upgrade, then pr I probably question the value that you get for, you know, by paying more for these refined blade shapes, but you don't. The paddles are the same price as the old version. So uh, any upgrade is just a bonus in my opinion. Now, the one thing you do pay more for is the VersaLock ferrule system, and that's a $20 upgrade. So the question there is, is it worth it? Well, you know, when you're paying around what, 170 to 230, roughly dollars for a paddle that you can upgrade with the VersaLock. Is it worth it? Well, it really depends on you. For me, that's not a lot of money to upgrade if you're gonna get some value out of the VersaLock. And as I already mentioned, it's great for someone who isn't locked in and knowing that they need this length, specific length of paddle. It's someone who you know wants to be able to mess around with length a bit. It's for someone who, who paddles different kayaks and it can really benefit from a, a paddle that can adapt to the different size and styles of kayaks that they're paddling or for someone who's going to share their paddle with different people that could benefit from that as well. 20 bucks really not a big upgrade. If you think any of those, if there's any of those reasons apply to you, then why not? So now let's talk about what model is right for you. And we'll start with the least expensive of the models, the fiberglass model. Now the fiberglass model retails for between 120 and 140 US dollars. Uh, it comes with the snap button ferrule, as I mentioned before. Uh, it also has a fiberglass shaft, fiberglass reinforced nylon plastic blades. And this combination of fiberglass shaft and blades uh, makes it a little bit heavier and it has a little bit more flex than the other models. And so what that means is that uh, the extra weight over a long day of paddling will result in a little bit more arm fatigue. And the extra flex of the paddle means you're gonna get a slightly less efficient stroke than the other paddles. It's a high quality entry level paddle, but it's a great paddle for people who aren't doing long days of paddling. They may not be paddling all that much and, and people who are on a stricter budget. Now, if you wanna go for, or you do go for longer paddles and you paddle more often, or maybe you just have the budget to step things up a little bit, you might wanna consider the hybrid model. And the big difference between the hybrid model and the fiberglass model is for one, the shaft of this hybrid model is carbon. That makes it a little lighter, that makes it stiffer. So you get more performance from this paddle. Uh, it also comes with a either the PosiLock system 
or the VersaLock ferrule system. And the benefits of that I already talked about. It's a really, it's a rock solid connection that lets you change its feather uh, infinitely. And you can go with the VersaLock, which allows you to change the length of the blade. The next step up is the carbon ray. Now the carbon ray retails for 225 to 245 US dollars. And the big difference between the carbon ray and the hybrid ray is you've got a carbon shaft, but you also have carbon reinforced nylon blades or plastic blades. Uh, and you do also have the option of PosiLock or the VersaLock ferrule system. Gives you an even lighter and higher performing paddle. You know, at 245, that's what the carbon ray costs with the VersaLock system. That's not a cheap paddle, but that's also not an expensive paddle. Full carbon paddles, carbon shafts with um, composite, real carbon blades, not these uh, carbon reinforced nylon blades, they typically go for 450 to 550 US dollars, twice the price of this thing. And that's where these Ray series have really come in and delivered. That's why they deliver incredible performance and durability for the price. You don't have to spend that kind of money. When you do go to a full carbon blade, well, you get, not surprisingly, a lighter paddle that's even stiffer. Even though these blades are quite stiff, a full carbon blade is stiffer still, so you get a lighter paddle that is even higher performing. But like anything, w when you get to a certain level, the cost increase is matched by smaller gains. And the joy of the Ray series is that the upgrades that you make get significant gains each time. So really the joy of the Ray series is there's pretty much a paddle for any type of paddler, unless you really want to get ultra, ultra high performance paddle and are willing to spend the bucks on it. So there you have it, a uh, bit of an overview of the new series, not so much a review. I mean, I don't feel like I need to review this series of paddles because you know, I've been using it. And if you watched any of my past videos, you, you'll see in the past 10 years of videos that I've made, me using these paddles a lot. So any upgrade is, is a welcome addition to this paddle line. I really like the VersaLock uh, telescoping ferrule. Two thumbs up before the new series, two thumbs up for the new series. I hope you enjoyed this video and you found it helpful to some degree. And you know, stay tuned for lots more tips, gear reviews, and paddling adventures.